Hey there, it's David Gordon from Theater Mania here. It is Wednesday, September 9th. I'm here with the great John Cameron Mitchell, uh, co-creator, original star of Hedwig and the Angry Inch. And John, you have an album out that just came out on Thursday, or Friday, rather. I do. How are you? I'm good. I'm Thank shooting you. The, another video for it today. Cool. Yeah. So you were, according to the press release, you were in a 100-year-old stone hut outside of Palm Springs when you decided to start writing music. Make an album. Yeah. Tell me yeah. about all of this. Um, well, I was, you know, bored and, and, and uh, depressed, as many of us were at that time. I also enjoyed the solitude, to be honest, you know, and things slowed down. For some, it didn't slow down. Obviously, they have kids and they got to work. Yeah. You know, but th there was a strange, you know, pause, which some of us were able to take advantage of um, in some ways, you know, creatively. And I actually thrived on that. So, but I was, you know, I was, I'm working on some television projects, but those tend to take years. So I was like, what can I do to keep myself interested and creative uh, that's short, you know, shorter bursts. And yeah. so I, I asked friends uh, who are musical to send me instrumental tracks as a kind of game, you know, and I could write uh, melody and lyrics over the top and then we would farm it out to other friends to add other instruments, uh, you know, like the, the stone soup story, you know, where yeah. it has a stone and soup and people walk by, oh, what are you making? Oh, stone soup. Oh, I got some carrots. I'll throw it in. And then it ends up being something actually pretty tasty. And as the songs came in, I was like, well, they're really, we should do an album, you know, and it should be a benefit album. You know, every, a lot of people are in need right now. Um, I was already doing Zoom shows, cameos, merch stuff for various charities, um, including a COVID food bank in Mexico City, a trans uh, justice group and a BLM Mm -hmm. related uh, MLK scholarship fund. So it's, you know, to be honest, the, the cameos and those other things yeah. bring in more money faster and this takes right. a lot longer, but it's something hopefully that will last forever, you know, and yeah. we have uh, the first nine songs are out. Uh, if you've it's ordered- New American Dream part one. Yep, New American Dream is the album and the next nine songs will probably come hopefully before the election. Um, and, you know, it's been really wonderful. People, part of the fun of it is like, what are they going to send me? And, you know, what style is it that I'm yeah. not used to and can play with? And as an actor, it's really, it's a fun game. It's like an improv game. And uh, there's some songs from my point of view. There's some from uh, fictional characters. You know, I play a, a failed you know, straight husband in the song, No yeah. Debt. And uh, I'm writing a song now from the point of view of a very bad mother. Mm. Um, there's another one from a murderer. Um, so it's, it feels like, uh, it feels like fun improv. Did you give, how did you, well, first of all, how did you choose amongst your friends and colleagues, the artists that you sent stuff out to? Or did you just cast a wide net? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a wide net. It's people generally I've worked with before. Um, Jamie Stewart, who worked on How to Talk to Girls. My composer from Anthem, who actually couldn't do one because he's so involved with the pro, you know ongoing protests. Mm -hmm. uh, Stephen Trash from Hedbig. People I admire that I haven't worked with, like Alinda Sagara, who's got a, an amazing band called Hooray for the Riff Raff. She's originally from the Bronx. Puerto Rican descent and a, a, just an amazing talent. She does American Sickness with me. Uh, Leland, who is a kind of a pop producer, you know, Troy Sivan and, and Selena Gomez, uh, co-writer, uh, had something kind of rattling around. And I, it was soon after the trans march in New York. So I kind of adapted that for the song, Say Their Names, which we did a vid video for here. There's a singer, uh, a non-binary singer in Provincetown named Kaya Cristal, who's, who I do that song with as a duet and is in the video today. Um, and then there's, you know, one person was a, a French stranger that I saw on Instagram doing a cover of a Hedvig song, which I liked very much. And I handed him 
a, a melody that I had written after a terrible breakup, you know, 15 years ago. And he put chords to it and made it something very special. And we did it as a duet, him playing my ex, uh, again, a kind of improv thing. And then we wrote another one together. So it was people, I cast a wide net and whoever responded, you know, some people I had to keep nudging. Yeah. Um, because they weren't quite sure what the point of it, not the point, but you know, it's like musicians are tend to be a little more moment to moment than theater people. Right. <laughs> theater people have, you know, are good with organization because the things, you know, need a lot of people and a lot of planning. Um, so it turned out that sometimes I may have had too many songs, but you know, the more the merrier, right? What, um, what was your, was there an overall thesis for the album that you were going for? Or was it just a collection of songs about, you know, the challenges of living in America now? I mean, the new American dream song came a little bit later. Uh, it, the lyrics kind of come from an outtake from Anthem, mm -hmm. which deals with our nameless president being yeah. cannibalized by Mitch McConnell. Um, and I just, people it's really great. enjoy it. Yeah, people enjoyed that speech, which I had posted on Instagram earlier. Uh, so it just, Justin Craig, who works with me as a music director for my tour and was a music director for Hedwig on Broadway, uh, wrote this fun rave up instrumental and I tailored that Trump story for, you know, his uh, track mm -hmm. and then added uh, the great Amber Martin, who's an incredible cabaret performer that I tour with a lot. She does all the backups and, um, you know, it's like, it's just fun to farm out. Oh, I know a bass player. I know a, you know, the song See You Again was the probably the first one we finished and Lance Horn, you know, who works yeah. at Club Coming and works with a lot of greats like, you know, Justin Vivian Bond, Taylor Mack, Alan Cumming, Meow Meow. Uh, it's a great group. Yeah, it's just like, and it's also people who are psyched about helping other people out, you know, which yeah. is our, you know, that's our way of working, you know, in downtown Cabaret, New York, which I feel like a part of, you know, people like Lady Rizzo, Bridget Everett, you know, Toshi Reagan. These are all the people that are nurtured at Joe's Pub. Right. Um, you know, Pangea, Sid's, Sid Gold's Request Room, all of these downtown cabarets, which is where, you know, Hedvig uh, comes from. You know, yeah. Squeezebox, was, Squeezebox was the rock and roll drag club that, Hedvig came out of as well as, you know, nurtured people like Anoni and, and Sherry Vine and, and uh, Laverne Cox even, you know, these are people who I was learning from, mm -hmm. you know, in the nineties when I was developing Hedvig. Uh, so just want to, you know, just trying to give back, you know, I'm still doing the show Shrill yeah. on Hulu and that pays the bills while, so I can do all of this benefit stuff um and you know trying to keep an even keel an optimism you know in a very volatile time i i remain a worried optimist you know yeah um we're all very nervous this year about a lot of things and uh people some people are stepping up you know they're really young people are realizing their voice is heard which is the best, which is the most optimistic thing that I can think of for me this year, just seeing, oh, John's gone. There he is. I can't hear you now, but it might take a second. Yeah, I'm having a yeah, there we dinner. Go. We're having dinner tonight with Marilyn May, the great jazz cabaret singer who's 92 Whatever. years old and is in town. Yeah, I'm trying to find a song that would work for us for the second half of the album too. That would be amazing. I've heard just cover a Hedwig song. <laughs> yeah, well, I'd like to get something original. I'm not yeah. sure. Who's a good composer that can work in the in the jazz realm? Oh, that's interesting. You know, I don't know jazz 
buzzers off the top of my head. Yeah. Well, Lance Horn might be a good suggestion for her, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to ask him. Yeah. What uh, do you miss performing? Like over this time, were, were you supposed to be on tour, on doing your tour still? We were. We had to keep, we postpone a lot of gigs it's Japan, Korea, New York, LA, Salt Lake, and and then Europe. So those will come back eventually. Yeah. Um, we also, but we act in, in Provincetown, the Crown and Anchor figured out an outdoor distance situation for mm -hmm. their shows uh, of like 80 people, you know, distanced. And so I actually did do two shows this summer. Ah, how was uh, that? Did it feel, did it feel like the real Using thing? many of the new, new songs and it did. It did. I was a little rusty. Uh, I was also performing with my friend Bitch, uh, mm -hmm. who's an amazing singer, who's in Short Bus. And we're writing a song for the album, too. And mm -hmm. uh, so I got, you know, I got some of my performing rocks off. Um, yeah. And I'm okay not performing for a while, you know. What is it like to perform Hedwig stuff in Salt Lake City, which is a place you were just, that you just mentioned? <laughs> well, we didn't. You know, we didn't do it there, um, right. but because it got canceled. But the uh, yeah. when I do perform in places that are, you know, let's say not on the, you know, beaten track, those places tend to be more enthusiastic, you know, because yeah. Salt Lake is where all the freaks of Utah would go, you know, and it's a very liberal city government in a mm -hmm. conservative state, you know, and Utah has always been you know, a, a kind of Mormon conservatism that's less, let's say, dirty and corrupted yeah. than some other old, you know, like Romney's an example, you know, Romney, yeah. who's generally a good guy, you know, but a plutocrat, nonetheless, right. um, sure. but can actually call out the obvious, you know, iniquities of the president Partly because his his seat is safe, but also because he's just like, this is wrong. Yeah, yeah. this is wrong. And you know, the Mor Mormon has its own issues, but they also, you know, pointedly say, you know, gay gay discrimination is wrong. You know, they also think homosexuality is wrong. But to right. actually discriminate against someone because they're trans or gay um, is wrong. And you know, you don't see, you know, Falwell Jr. doing that, you know, so right. there's a di it's a different vibe there. Um, and when we DJ say in Pensacola, the crowd is more excited. So in, in many ways, going to the less traveled place is a better show. Do you see yourself? So you did Hedwig again, you returned to the role when it was on Broadway. Yeah, uh, it was one of the greatest nights of my life seeing that like one of the greatest oh. nights of my theater life seeing that. Uh, even after the broken leg or broken foot. Uh, I thought I was very messy. Um, I, was, I was kind of doing anti-Broadway. <laughs> um, just kind of, you know, this is, you know, really had big falling apart on stage and the shows went on forever, <laughs> but I had a blast. I went to the midnight show and I remember getting out, it was like two o'clock in the morning and I was like, this show is 90 minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you see yourself playing her again down the line or are you like in a full production setting or are you like done completely? I, you know, I never say never. It's like, I'm sure someday Hedwig will come back to Broadway and uh, I prefer being a replacement because you don't have to do as much press. Right. <laughs> the pressure's off. Exactly. Um, so it was actually really nice to be the fourth Hedwig on Broadway because I yeah. didn't have to do anything but the show. And since I wrote it, I can sort of say what I want. <laughs> what did Broadway mean for for you and Stephen, just in terms of the trajectory and the of the show and the life of the show? It was very gratifying because back in the day when it first came out, there was no way we could be on Broadway. We were too queer, too draggy, too punk uh, for Broadway, even though London or Australia, the drag and the rock wouldn't have been a uh, 
you know, wouldn't have been a deal breaker, you know, because drag is built into those cultures and, and, you know, punk too. And yeah. so what uh, theater was, whatever you made it uh, granted, you know, there was still most theater is pretty uh, anodyne and the revivals are predictable. Right. Um, so it was very exciting when, you know, shows like American Idiot and those things showed that there was, you know, Broadway could handle different, different music forms. And then it was about getting the right person, you know, Neil, who was the perfect ambassador to those who might have thought Hedwig was something, you know, déclassé or, or scary to them. And he could yeah. introduce, introduce it as something that was uh, a traditional Broadway show. I mean, the structure is very similar, you know, yeah. to any un other shows. And it, it's kind of, the theme is, is not unusual. You know, it's sort of like Gypsy, the person who feels you know, short shrifted by life. And, and uh, in that case, it was her daughter. And in Hedwig's case, it's her lover who, who yeah. gets, becomes the star. And it's a very old fashioned Broadway show. In my view, it's just the subject matter was somewhat unusual, but in terms of the form and what it's about uh, and the structure, it's very Broadway. So we're yeah. ha happy to finally be vindicated that it was a Broadway show. And it won a Tony. It won uh, four Tonys. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Uh, John, thank you for your time. You're welcome. And have really a wonderful uh, rest of the uh, fall. You too. And the album New American Dream Part 1 is on your band camp. It's on band camp. Uh, you, you can... Just search New American Dream and the new uh, the uh, first single, New American Dream, which is quite outrageous, is out right. as well. It goes All proceeds go to charity. Yeah. Be well. Thank you for your time. All right. Thanks. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye.